Today, I want to share with you how a new study has revealed the truth of God's Word. Don't you just love it? And it's with food, of course, because that's what I do. I am amazed with food. Food amazes me, therefore God amazes me, right? I'm a net reader, the biblical nutritionist, and I have a new discovery for you that you have to watch this video all the way through the end. I'll make it short and quick so I don't waste your time because this is going to blow your mind. Because I'm here to help you cook confidently, therefore be healthy with confidence, and therefore understand God's love for you more confidently, if you can say it that way. Anyway, I'm so glad you watched this because I'm so excited. I've been wanting to share this with you for so long. As soon as I understood it and I read it, I, my mind was just blown away with how God revealed himself through food again. See, every time we sit down to dinner, I'm looking at the food. It's like, oh, God, you are so amazing. Every time I, I eat the right portions and I feel amazing, I'm like, oh, God, you are so amazing. But today's truth that I'm going to share with you out of a study that wasn't designed to reveal God's truth, but yet he did anyway. Don't you love it? Okay, so here we go. Okay, so... You're familiar with GMOs, genetically modified organisms. I'm not going to go into all the detail of that right now. That's not the point of today's study. And today I want to share with you, you know, for decades, and well, years, decades, a long time, man has been working studiously under the microscope to understand the DNA of food. When you learn the DNA, you can change the DNA. You can control the crops. You can control the people. That's basically the bottom line. That's the purpose, okay? Now, we see it happening in the grocery stores. We see it happening on our dinner tables. In fact, people are on opposite ends of the dinner table when it comes to the topic of GNA. GNA, that's not even a term. GMOs and DNA. There we go. I got it right. Okay, so either people are totally for GMOs because it's going to save the world or they're totally against it because it's going to totally destroy the digestive tract. So it doesn't matter which camp you're in. I'm just saying we are at opposite ends of the understanding of DNA control. But that's not the point of this. So let's just push that cereal aside and let's look at what happened. Scientists have worked hard to decode the DNA in plants. So when we understand DNA, it opens new doors for crop productivity and pesticide developments. Okay, in 2002, scientists decoded the genome, which is like the genetic material inside the plant, of rice. So in 2002, they decoded rice. And in 2008, they completed the genome of soybeans. Okay, so we know rice is out there. Um, a lot of work is being done with rice. A lot of genetically modified soybeans are being grown all around the world. And then in 2009, they mapped out the genome of corn. And we know most of the produce, mo not the produce, most of the food in the grocery store has a type of a byproduct of the genetically modified corn in it. Okay, but they've always been wanting to understand wheat. Wheat studies were complicated and the answers were evasive. And you wonder, wonder why? Why was it, why was it so hard to understand wheat? <laughs> I'm getting there, hang on. I told you, this is just gonna blow your mind. Hang in there. So wheat is a very important crop. In fact, both um, politically and biblically, wheat is very important. So politically, that takes us to scientifically. Scientists will say that wheat is arguably the most critical crop in the world. It's grown on more land than anything else, even without man trying to intervene and make it, quote, better. Wheat provides humanity with one-fifth of all of our calories. Not one-fifth, actually a fifth of all of our calories. Now, let's look at it biblically. Biblically, there's even debate about wheat, too, because we've got new authors saying, well, it's not the same as it was back then, da 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 da, da. Okay, but let's look at the true bread that Scripture is talking about. Let's start in John 6, chapter 6, verse 51. I am the living bread that came down out of heaven. If anyone eats of this bread, he will live forever. And the bread also which I give for the life of the world is my flesh. All right, so Christ is comparing himself to bread and how there is a living bread. Okay, let's move on. John 6, 35. John loves to talk about Jesus, doesn't he? Okay, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will not hunger and he who believes in me will never thirst. Yeah, isn't John amazing? Okay, then let's go on to another verse in John. John 6, 48. Now these are all in chapter six. He says, I am the bread of life. Once again, over and over and over, Christ compares himself to the bread of life. That means he gives life. He is life. And he's using bread as a metaphor. Now, let's move to 2 Corinthians 9.10. He 
Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. Over and over and over. Bread is mentioned throughout scripture, Old and New Testaments, over 400 times. It's important for us to understand bread. But there's more. There is a difference in wheat. Okay. So why did it take so long to unravel the DNA of wheat? Wheat has one of the most complex genomes known to science. This is getting good. Hold your seat. Wheat's genome is enormously complicated. Now, I want you to consider these facts. They were able to understand the DNA of an herb plant that's very similar to a cabbage. This was the first plant to ever be sequenced, and it contains 135 million, that's with an M, DNA letters. That's a lot of letters. The human genome contains three billion, that's with the B, three billion DNA letters. And you wonder why we're so complicated to understand. <laughs> okay. Bread, hold on to your seat, bread has 16 billion with a B. This is phenomenal. The still, the don't turn off yet because I haven't even gotten to the good part yet. It's, this is phenomenal. It's just, and just one of wheat's chromosomes, which has been labeled the 3B, 3B as in boy, is bigger than the entire soybean genome combined. Okay, you're thinking, well, Annette, yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. I know. I haven't gotten to the good part yet. Here, here it comes. Now, although this is incredible, it's not the best part. It's not the reason I'm talking to you today. Now, grab the butter, open the oven. There's a lot more. The bread wheat genome is really three genomes in one. Hmm, three in one. Ever heard that before? Scientists think that this happened through the evolutionary process 500,000 years ago, but we know it was created this way. Now, in man, if you can't explain it, evolutionize it, because that's the answer to everything they don't understand. Well, it happened in evolution. No, it happened because God planted it this way. God wanted it to represent him. He is the bread of life. That's why the wheat, the chromosomes in the wheat is three in one. It's like three separate plants all together within every kernel of wheat. Do you get it? That's amazing. So modern bread wheat has three pairs of every chromosome. One pair from each of the ancestral grasses, which is what they call it. And so basically, if you're into technical lingo, that's a hexaploid genome. There are three totally different grasses with their own DNA combined together in one grain of wheat. Three in one, it's the Trinity, each with its own set of DNA. Do I hear the hallelujah chorus happening right now here on YouTube? Well, I don't sing but for in public, but anyway, yeah. You should be singing hallelujah, hallelujah. I mean, this is better than cruciferous. I told you it would be. Three in one. So no matter what the reason why the scientists were searching for the complete revelation of the wheat DNA, God is the one who revealed himself instead. Don't you love it? Okay, so food amazes me. God continues to reveal himself through his design of his foods. The Bible diet, the treasures of healthy living Bible study, always show us the flavor of his grace. Our most intimate need every day is of our life is food. And now we see that this physical daily need reveals our most intimate spiritual need. And that's in Jesus Christ. Because he is part of the Trinity. Our Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is the Trinity. And the wheat represents the Trinity. Who would have thought? Well, not me. But God knew it. And he revealed it himself to us. Now, right now, if I had fresh bread, I would pull it out of the oven, butter it up, and offer you a slice. But I don't. But I do have just, you know, just a reminder of each one of these little grains of wheat has the Trinity represented, represented inside it. This is why when I go and I, into churches and I teach the bread making class and, and we get to get our hands in it. We get to grind the wheat. We get to make the bread. We get to butter the bread. We get to eat the bread. And then I get to teach them about who Christ really is. How he is our daily bread. How he is the one that, that will be the only thing that will satisfy us completely. 
I'm Annette Reader, the Biblical Nutritionist. I told you this was going to be good. I totally told you that ahead of time. And I hope you are just shouting hallelujah. And I could almost cry right now just saying that. Because God wants to teach you who he is. He wants to teach you how his foods are just a representative, a small representative of who he is. He loves you. He died for you. He's coming again for you. And I think we'll have bread in heaven. I'm not really sure, but we might. I know we have fruits and vegetables. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so be sure and subscribe down below. And I really want to teach you again how to be confident in your cooking, how to be confident in your health, and how to kind of confidently understand how much God loves you. This is just one small kernel of truth. God has so many more that he wants to teach you, and I want to be there with you too. Be sure and leave your comments down below. I'm, I'm sure you've got a lot of thoughts going on in your head. And just stay tuned to what we're teaching. Stay tuned to God's Word. There is so much more to come. Check out the, the website, thebiblicalnutritionist.com, or the Facebook page. Join us there so we can chat and be engaged. And I am so blessed to be a part of this ministry, to be able to work with pastors and missionaries and, and friends and help them gain the health that God wants them to have. And if you wonder what I do all the time, that, that's really what I do. I just I teach and then I, I work as a coach for pastors and missionaries and just keeping them strong on the front lines. And if you want to donate to this ministry, I would be so thrilled and thankful and so would many people around the world. Thank you for joining me. God continues to reveal himself at the dinner table. Amen. Thank you.